Greetings and salutations, outsiders. Have you ever felt that Bethesda underutilized one of its greatest and most mysterious mysteries? That being Zens? Well, you wouldn't be the first, nor should you be the last. The team of Project Zeta, for instance, were so significantly affected by this lack of extraterrestrial innovation as to create a particularly profound proof of concept for what Bethesda could have done. I call this a proof of concept because Project Zeta is stunning to look at but uninteresting in practice past the first few minutes. The level design is simple but elegant, reminiscent of the original Mothership Beta Zeta, only on a much smaller scale. Should you think not of this as a quest, but instead as a museum, you will enjoy this small mod. My sister's Pessian perspective is correct. Once you've installed the mod and reached level 20, you will receive a quest leading you to a small unmarked toy store. If you have already reached level 20, the quest will begin upon your next level increase. The store is straight up nightmare fuel, which is probably why Outside wrote the name of it as Chucky's Toy Store in the script rather than Shuckles, which is the actual name. Venture into the basement and you'll find a secret laboratory filled with specimens and equipment. One such piece of equipment will transport you to a spaceship, should you choose to tamper with it. An opening scene nearly identical to that of the Mothership Beta Zeta DLC will then be initiated. Ugh perverted the aliens and their party probes. There is nothing perverted about probing a living subject. It's for science, sister. Um, sister, hundreds of years and thousands of subjects equates to one of two things, disease research and perversion. And seeing as the Lone Wanderer didn't come off the mother ship with a cough, I think we both know which it was. Dirty alien perverts. God, I hate it when you make sense to me. But I got rabbits. Anyway, shoot those dirty perv bastards with your new alien companion, Roger. Oh, son of a... The aliens are perverts. I told you. <sighs> the goal of this quest is to take control of the bridge. Do that, and you'll be able to use this pleasant little biodome as your home away from home. That said, your workshop will be attacked by Zetans. In fact, all workshops will be invaded by Aryans. These aliens are not a significant threat to the player, nor are they honestly all that enjoyable to fight. They do provide you with weapons and items from the MBZ BLC though. Outside found three pistol type blasters and a shock baton, but no rifle. You get the standard alien blaster, the alien atomizer, which fires Q simultaneous bolts, and the captain's blaster, which fires five projectiles, I believe. They are very bare bones, but are still really cool for anyone feeling a bit nostalgic. Despite its problems, Project Zeta fills a hole that we as Fallout 3 enthusiasts would have liked. The mod gets a solid 9 of 10 and gives me a great deal of hope for the future of the Capital Wasteland project. Jeepers, you stingy sister, you. Pass that microphone my way. As soon as you pass me a pillow. Uh, do thighs work? Yeah, that, that's fine. A light shining in darkness isn't only good for keeping my little sister awake, but also for blowing the brains out of heathens and profligates. It is an astoundingly high quality ham gun courtesy of Colt. Yes, you guessed it. This is the M1911 45 caliber pistol used by everyone's favorite Balani Bay's companion, Joshua Brightham. The legendary Bergman, similar to the Winchester Model 1897 shotgun featured in our first historical weapons video, this is a very streamlined weapon mod, only the damage modifiers can be changed at the workbench. Probably because the mod was ported from Falani Vegas. She means it's a port of a New Vegas mod, <laughs> not from the original. Hellish no, you are sweeping. <sighs> Indeed I am. The Mew textures are exquisite. Be turning a grip mane to look like a snake scabe and an engraving along the slide that says a light shining in darkness in Greek characters. If I'm not mistaken, which I never am, this weapon uses custom sound effects for reloading and cooking. Possibly firing too, but I don't think so. Listen to the sound of this and tell me it doesn't fill you with feelings you'll later need to repent for. Uh-huh. Really? 
finally given the Mac Rob a run for its money. Mm. I'm up. I'm sure you're not the only one. I hate you. Outside, we'd call that a term of endearment. When you need a weapon that screams classic capital wasteland slash FNV, you need, and I do mean you need, Xamtir's capital wasteland minigun. This mod resurrects the style used in previous games. If you aren't familiar with the style we're talking about, that is okay. I'll explain it quickly. The old version of the minigun has a slightly boxier look as opposed to the more cylindrical, very rounded off look of the newer model. They also have a smaller internal ammo box rather than the more sizable cylindrical ammo wheel. The latter is probably more realistic given its size, but mm, the former is cooler. Given that its small size makes the presence of an external aesthetic ammo box practical in appearance. Obviously, it doesn't really matter which you choose to use, given that there isn't any real ammo limit regardless. Nevertheless, fees are cool. If you choose to download them, you get all the basic modifications. Tri barrel, accelerated barrel, shredder, stabilized frame. Hmm, was that included in Fallout 4? Um, no, actually, it wasn't. Which I would guess means that the accelerated motor wasn't either. Oh, yep, yep. I just got word that Bethesda does suck and lazily left those out. Did your fake transmission also tell you that the mod author remade all 58 animations to fit the new models? No, as it turns out, outside also sucks. Well, he did. Which is precisely why these awesome weapons work perfectly in first and third person, as well as in power armor. Even super mutants can use them, in fact, which is extremely uncommon in any mod. Well, I'm sure that made you happy. That it does. Then you'll be ecstatic when you eventually encounter the legendary variants from Fallout 3 and New Vegas, which can be purchased from various vendors. Oh, uh, you know what, little sister? What's that? You also get faction paint jobs for all of the Commonwealth bigwigs, including the Mimmen, who look particularly awesome in this brand new mod that Elias mistook for being power armor. It's also almost badass enough to make you, me, consider joining those walking bed men. We'll cover that in another video. Our next mod is of greater magnitude. This is mine. No, Tess, outside told me- Pillow? <sighs> yeah, outside can choke. Pillow me. Yay! My turn. Those of you who are here for the first episode will recall us talking about the NCR outfit pack by the fried turkey and how we knew of a mod that makes it endlessly more enjoyable to obtain. That mod is this one. Cashaired X created an extension which supplies the outfit to the gunners on PC. Xbox users have to settle for Environiac's NCR outfit pack replacer for the Minutemen. Both versions are cool in their own right, but we haven't tested the Xbox Replacer plugin yet. If it works as impended, the NCR soldiers should occupy your settlements, come to your aid, and patrol the roads. Additionally, you'll get support from NCR soldiers in battle. The gunner version probably suits me better, though. I like to kill the things I love. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> Not like I would hurt you. I would use a pillow. Hush now. You'll find that this not only makes the gunners look cooler, but also provides them with higher grade armor. Outside faced off against them while testing the historical weapons from the last episode and was absolutely wrecked while using a fully upgraded Lewis gun by a chick with a metal stick. More than once, by the way. Baton power, baby. All right. <sighs> okay. So. Seeing as my little sister is asleep in, I'll cover Mojave Cazadors on her behalf. This is a pretty basic mod that does what the name suggests, adding Cazadors to the Commonwealth. You will find them in areas where Stingwings occupy, so sparse lest you be in the glowing sea. And they come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, none of which are particularly deadly outside even went so far as to let one sting his character a whole bunch, only to easily walk off. Uh, um, sorry. Only to easily walk it off. 
That could be because he's over what level 100, though, which is why you should probably know that anti-venom can be crafted in the chemistry station. Like in Me Vegas, it may be necessary for lower level players to take anti-poison mid-fight or possibly post-battle to mitigate the effects of the Casper's deadly stain. You do have to kill one first, though, so not sure how hopeful that'll be. Anyway, they aren't fast like Stingwings are and are considerably slower than the Cazadors from New Vegas as well. So you shouldn't need any anti-poison. So we were going to review Attack of the Lobotomites, which is a new mod from the Bone Zone, but it's a literal pit. So Matthew on that one. That's all we got for today. If you enjoyed the mods, endorse them. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe. We love you guys and hope you'll have great days. I am going to go to sleep with my sister in a totally wholesome, family-friendly way. <laughs>